day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Yeah, yeah, that's, and that's just what I'm trying to say. So that's, that's, it's a query that should continue. I think the pattern, I mean, the establishing the pattern of establishing the CIT is excellent because it engages us intellectually. But if that intellectual engagement will continue. Right. You know, I agree. concerning the stuff that we've gone over. Right. I agree. When you bring in a, like for me, for example, that's what I did, right? I, 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 I took that in mind. For. Uh -huh. And as well as going over the scriptures, in the end, we may come up with a, a consolidated CIT. That's that's mm. or like Bishop was saying is I'm not the one I have, right? Bishop said right there in front of you, right? So the question is, he was like, we went to get a CIT for this, for the part for that that uh this study. And I'm saying that we should try to walk away with an understanding where Something should be rewritten. Well, I'm, all I'm saying is. Well, look. Oh, go ahead, Bishop. The way this thing is supposed to work is you're supposed to come to the session with a CIT. Right. You got Every, Everybody is supposed to come to the session with a CIT. Right. Everybody supposed to come to the session with a CIT. Exactly. Everybody's supposed to come. To the session with a CIT. <laughs> right. Right. Now, but I, and if you've done your work, when I see your CIT. I'm gonna immediately see enhancement. I, I just I'll see just one aspect of my CRT that I left out. Exactly. It's a that because I don't know what you I don't know what you might see when you read mine. Exactly. Exactly. It's gonna be real hard for you to write a composite CRT. Right. Well, well <laughs> uh, from my understanding, what you're gonna learn when you read my CIT is what God has given me right. based on these scriptures. Right. You can't challenge that. You can't unless it's just completely, you know, out the box and has nothing to do with those scriptures. You, you know, then you'll be like, "Well, who are you listening to?" Yeah. <laughs> but the other, point. the other point is, is that you see, your CRT is gonna be a different view on the same truth that I'm looking at. Uh huh. Right? Based it's on, on me, it's the one truth in the scripture that that this section of the scripture we're looking at in Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37, ain't but one truth in that scripture, right? That's the CIT we're trying to get at. When Jesus says that the love of God and love of neighbor is basically the whole essence of the whole law, both the right. ten commandments and the most, you, 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 you can't get nothing else out of there. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> there is no other no so now when, when you write your crt what you're going to be looking at and you're going to look at the truth that's in that scripture and what we get this we get to, deep, to see the different aspects of that truth exactly exactly that's what we want right. that one truth Amen. Then, we can't come up with five or six different truths and we're all disconnected well, so yeah they all should be pointing to the same aspect of the text Yes. And in the end, though, it's, it, we probably could say from the discussion, this is a solid central idea of the text. Right? And and now your theology and you and what you actually do now become rooted in truth, not in speculation or assumption or opinion or what you what you think. Exactly. You allow the spirit of God to grab a hold of your thinking and direct you so that what ends up is is what the spirit of God really that CIT is really supposed to be what the spirit of God is really saying to you. Yes, sir. You know, there is a the the, 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 the magnitude of this task is I can't say you're overwhelming, but it's it's uh it's really it's, it's broad, it's very vast, and it has affected religion. Probably from the inception of, of it. I listened to and having studied like Catholicism, they came up with a lot of CITs that go down with nothing in the scriptures as I've read them. But they were they were accepted as doctors. Say again. Oh, they did. 
Oh, uh, they, they were accepted as doctors and they were practicing doctors and they have been for centuries. Right. And they're still CIT. That's, that's weird that we see it having this discussion because that's how religions were born. They were they were born when some men got together and decided that this is what God was saying. Oh, okay. And uh man, we have that's interesting because I, I, I think in terms of having that interactive conversation with him on a day-to-day -day basis and him revealing to us, even as Jesus did in the parable, revealing to us his meanings himself and continuously. So is that something that man, that's y'all gotta forgive me for this. I'm, I'm, I'm having a moment. Uh is that where we are? I mean, as we express you know our, our understanding of scripture. Or we continue to query Christ concerning the validity of what we come, the conclusions we come. Or do we, do we at some point say, okay, I think we got it and move on? How do we do that? Well, well, once we have the CRT before, so we have the discussion, and you're free, listen, you're free to tweak your TRT as you see fit, if you see a need for it, if not, you're, you're free to leave it where it is. But I believe as time goes on, We'll be constantly coming back revisiting these things because I think we'll be continuing to receive more and more light on other truths. And as those other truths shine light back on these things, we can just we can go back and tweak and, and adjust it as we see fit. But I think we're gonna have the core truth already there. The, the object of the, of the CIT is to grasp that core truth that is being presented. Now you might not grab all the fancy bells and whistles of it, but you ought to have that core truth. Right. Later on, you might see a, well, I didn't know that thing had uh, uh, automatic windows on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, the, the reason. The reason. They had cruise control on it. <laughs> I, I mean, automatic yeah. door lock, but, 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 but those are just features of the core, but the core is still there. Right. Yeah, you know, and, and we're talking about whether we should keep record of this or not. There's a, the Catholic faith was in development even as I, practiced it. And at one point we had, you know, heaven, hell, purgatory, limbo, so forth and so on, these places of, of correction or reward or whatever it was. And then at some point we eliminated as a religion, we eliminated limbo. Yeah. You understand? That's uh you know that was the CIT at some point. Somebody came in and how they sat down there at the conclusion. So they're they they're 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 on board apparently. That they're they're still this this the, the, the religion itself is still um being Develop. But then that's and that became the question again. Is this how we begin to develop our religion by coming to certain ideologies? Because I know it was in the in the, in the beginnings of because I feel like that's where we're at right now, that we're developing some sort of a, a religious you know pattern to go about doing things. I, I think I think we're trying to get a, a, a pattern of uh just just studying the scriptures. The not, study of scripture. Okay, okay, I'll go with that. Yeah. Not making dogma. Right. right. That that's what the Catholic Church says. We're not trying to make dogma. That's, that's exactly right. It says that on this, how to how to really have people uh, encourage people to study scripture. Mm -hmm. you know? And what is what is a good way of doing that, especially doing group study. Because this is the people, I had, I had a praise report, and we had a relative that uh, has turned, returned himself back, turned his life back to Christ, and you know, gave him all that, that report. And now the person said, I am reading, look, Bishop, I am reading the scriptures now. That's the part the person was saying. I think, Elder, is that forms like this and, and encouragement is to, to try to show people how to study scriptures. If you're going to read it, if you're, going to read it for, if you're going to read it for yourself, or I like to encourage people to do collective groups because you get more like this. I think this is, you were saying that, right? This is, if you bring the different, ever bring their study to a forum, you'll get, you'll get a deeper relationship or uh, understanding of what the truth is saying to you. There, there's some. Um... And, and, and I think that's the appropriate time to bring it up because I I thought this, I think I was thinking this is something that I had experienced in this group was that we had gotten away from, from pretty much listening to one another and try to start hearing the voice of God uh -huh. through what through what we were studying and we were prompting each other to do it. and I saw the development of CIT as being that 
to get in the face of God and have God reveal these things to us. Right. And that the revelation comes and we come back together with a, a synopsis or whatever the, the topic we're studying with the CIT. So yeah. I think uh, Bradson uh, mentioned that earlier, uh, synopsized it anyway. Um, he gives a revelation on the word. He writes it down into the CIT, brings yeah. it back and shares it with us. And then we begin to examine and re-examine. Or, you know, I say not re-examine a validity book, but just for seeing what other aspects of the vision was saying. Where the aspects have been brought out, what other right. views have been brought out by that other person's perspective. Right. And then we kind of consolidate that and kind of get around uh, house opinions, around uh, around house opinion, I guess, of what we're actually looking at. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I get it. I get it. And that's the encouragement that I make. So, with that in mind, uh, does anybody want something to focus on a business anime? We will come back to this one. With the understanding of neighbor. We're we'll coming back to this one we got right now, right? Let me get something clear. Okay, let me have one quick point. Go to what? what was the, the aspects of discipleship in the last one? I'm just saying, I'm just saying for me, if I'm going to come to a serious study, I, I need to have done the legwork. I, right. I want to come armed with and teeming with yeah. my desire. To, to share what I believe the Spirit of God has shown me. Right. I am, I am, I have me. I, I don't know. I, I don't think there's any other way to do it. Now yeah. you, yeah. there's a way. There's a whole lot of ways to do it. But yeah. which way you go, yeah. it's going to require you to do some serious thinking about Scripture. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we're trying to provoke others and ourselves to do. I think that's yeah. it. Right? So, so yep. with that in mind, do 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 you want to revisit this? Now that everybody has a chance to read it. I, 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 I want to revisit one that we did. I'm still trying to figure out what the discipleship part of the last but I can't, I still don't get it. Okay, but you know what what, what recommendation is then if we want to go back to that parable, the sower, the, what what's incumbent upon people is to play their CIT or give it to me early, we can actually put it on the screen so we can talk about it. Hold on, okay. let me, let me. So we can, can we revisit that there do this next week? I, I, yeah. Listen, I can revisit that in one verse. Okay. Luke 9, 23. Can you bring it up? Yeah, one second. <laughs> But see, but see uh, we said this last week. <laughs> I know it. I didn't get it. <laughs> just think, it ain't really benefit you because it's just, listen. Until God, had, until you thought through it, and a lot of spirit of God to show to you, my telling to you ain't, ain't gonna make no difference. But in Luke nine twenty three, this is what Jesus said. This is the this is what I consider to be the very criteria for discipleship. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Uh, oh, you want to see, I got to readjust my screen. Daily and follow me. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, he, then he goes on to explain what he's talking about. Now, he makes a statement, then he follows up with an explanation. This is what I'm talking about. Just in case you're confused, I'm talking about you actually losing your life. Losing your, 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 your uh, control of your life. <laughs> hey, well, whosoever shall save his life, whosoever go, want to keep intact what he's already got, shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. But what advantage if a man gains the whole world and lose himself? Or be cast away. Which is probably shall be ashamed of me and of my word. Of him shall the son of man be ashamed when he shall come in his glory, in his own glory, and is his father, and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there'll be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of God. Until yeah. they see the So he explains now that this thing had reaches all the way into the consummation of the kingdom. Hmm. This 
thing has impact both here and there. <laughs> it has consequences both now and hereafter. I think I got confused when, we, when I tried to tie it into the sewing. Now. No, I, I was trying to figure out how the sewing, the, the, the seed sewer was tied into the discipleship. Hold on. I see this portion. I can I can understand it here. Yeah. But I didn't I didn't see the connection. You ain't seen it yet. Each one of those soils have a different set of things that hinder them. Okay. What's the cross for? Crucify your flesh. It, Destroy it, your flesh. It's a form of persecution. It is, yep. it is intended to bring death to something. Woo! Something, yeah. Now, in the parable of the soul, it said, <clears throat> it fell upon stony ground. It said, when persecution arose because of the word, it was offended. That person, that kind of soul, is unwilling to bear its cross. If you go follow Jesus, he said, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute me. Listen, I had to die and be raised up into newness of life to participate in the kingdom. You're going to have to die and be raised up in newness of life to become this new creature that can participate in the kingdom. In other words, death is necessary for participation in the kingdom of God. That's what the cross is for. But you know, bitch, I think I think Adam still trying to say when he looked at it, it's interesting when Jesus break it down, you can pull a lot from you know the, the mystery of the kingdom. Right. I think Adam was looking at that not broken down. It, right? well, what I'm saying. You you see, there are things that are explicitly said, and there are things that are that are that you have to go and dig out. The other thing he tells you is that you gotta know yourself. Yeah. Now the, the deceit that fell upon thorny ground, they were caught up in the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, the, the, the pleasures of this life. Yeah. They were unwilling to deny themselves. Right. And those things choked the word and it bear no fruit. Yeah. That was their state of discipleship. That was their state of discipleship at that point. Yeah. So, so we look at that. Okay, so like uh, uh that's what I'm saying last week, we can pull that his he went through those stages, all the three stages, at some point in his life to get to a place of fertility. Now listen, the good soul, the good soul represented the person who, who was willing to follow him, it, it denied itself, it took up his cross, it followed Jesus, and it brought forth fruit. I see what you're saying. Hey, look. Hey, no, no, no. But it's funny, it was four different grounds, right? Yeah, right. But it's interesting, now, in Addison saw on the prep, or the, the story that Jesus gave today, there were four different characters in that. In oh, that yeah. Parable. In that parable. Yeah, yeah. In that story. So, so what I'm telling you is this. See, once you've got a CRT that touches the very truth of Scripture, you will immediately begin to see how it relates to other, to other truths of Scripture. That's what I'm saying. Right. You saw, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You saw four different grounds of one thing, then you saw. Because I guess we would say that the Levites and the priests were unfruitful. Because I think, I guess when you said at the beginning of the, uh, we started this thing, the truth we really talk about is saving souls. Yeah. The, the fruit, that, the, the ultimate fruit was, but was exemplified by the saving of that, that, uh, that guy that had got beat up. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Well, right. 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 I'm saying the soul, though, that was talking about this to bring forth fruit, right? And bring the soul, save the souls, right? Then we saw four characters. The, the, we don't know whether that man that was attacked was a believer or not. So he could be just strictly unbelief. But the two other people were stony ground. I'm talking about the Pharisee and the Levite, right? They, what ground did they represent? Uh, I think, well, they were following the law, so they hadn't really been, they hadn't really been touched by the Spirit of God. 
So they concerned, they were concerned with the cardinal realm more so than the spiritual realm. So maybe, uh, maybe Stoney? Hey, Brenda, I think that's Stoney. To me, it's like, well, one of them actually went over there and took a look at him. But it looked like that was Stoney's <laughs> left. Yeah, yeah. That was Brother but, Adams trying to say, how you tie it back to something? And I, just, I think you can in some instances. Those, those two, because those two people were not fruitful. Okay, so how many, we had ground that was stony, then we had ground that was, no, you had wayside first, right? But the wayside was strictly, that was said last week. Now, Vincent, you, talk, you can get tired on that. He said, that's strictly unbelief. Yeah, okay. So that wouldn't, that wouldn't be them. They have knowledge of the word, but they're caught up with the cares of the world most of the time they're out of kingdom. So that would be more like stony ground. Stony ground to me. Yeah. What do you think, Brother Isaac? Yeah. Levi in the, in the, in the uh, tribe. Or the priest. What were they? What kind of ground you think they're part of? Because they weren't fruitful, because fruitful would have been save a soul, right? Yeah, they were the other people. 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 I don't know. You know? I, I think it was Tony Brown. That's the one I can think of. Yeah. We don't have anything dealing with cares of this world. Obviously, they didn't care. <laughs> they, but, well, well, they, cared. they cared about the law, which is of this world for the most part, you know. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe they might have been stony because they had, they had a knowledge of the word, but the knowledge of the word didn't help them sanctify. Well, <laughs> the question you really ought to ask is. Uh, in relation to Luke 9 23. Yeah. 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 That, and, you know, I think this, and let's go back to discipleship for next week. Let's, why don't we break that down? Because that's go, that you saying that ties in, because all of them to me has to tie in back to Mark some kind of way, right? Well, there's, a consi- there's a consistency among Jesus' and teaching. Yeah. There's yeah. a central theme in the way he approaches things. Like, that was a good idea. I don't know who said it, but it's saying that those two scriptures were CITs. Yeah. You know, love the Lord thy God with all our heart and our soul, mind, and life. Yeah, they were. They, yeah. they condensed everything that was tainted to it in the one small statement. Right. And I think they did that. I really think that was the purpose of doing that. Yeah. So I'm saying that for, for next week, uh, we can go with the Luke 9 uh, right here. That, and tie it back to the Mark 10 discipleship. Um, so we're gonna go back to the same one we did this week, right? I'm talking about nine. Well, then back up to the other one. Yeah, that one. So, you know, I don't think it, it it's gonna take much for me to 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 just write a CIT because I've I've got a lot of information. I just gotta encapsulate it and put it down, and 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 actually, what do they call it? Concentrate what I have. Make it concentrate. But I do like, so I can do that. It won't take me time. But I, I, I really would like to to discuss this. Uh, uh, Nine twenty-three, Luke nine twenty-three. Nine twenty-three, right? Um, that for that, right? But but if 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 the bishop. If if his if it's his desire to uh, get into this CIT, I don't know. Maybe he wants to to refine his more or whatever. I don't know. Or or hey, you. Get that, get that, what was that? And uh, the uh, the one uh, today. Luke, Luke ten. I thought, I thought y'all were satisfied. I thought we had moved on to the new text. I was trying to tell you, don't be in a hurry. There's a lot of stuff in these verses. Yeah.